In this video, I'm only going to talk about how to find probabilities for normal distributions using either a table or Microsoft Excel. If you'd like to know how to use your TI 83 or 84 calculator to do this, there's another video um, that will be out on ANGEL for that. So for this chapter, the focus is on continuous random variables instead of the discrete random variables we talked about in Chapter 5. And mostly we are going to talk about normal distributions. A normal distribution has that bell-shaped curve that we've talked about before. It's symmetric, so the right half is exactly like the left half. And in the very middle of the distribution is the mean, which we're going to use the symbol mu for the mean. So here are some properties about the standard normal distribution. Standard normal means that the mean is 0, so mu is equal to 0, and the standard deviation is equal to 1. What helps us find probabilities with normal distributions is that the area under the curve, under that bell-shaped curve, is equal to 1. So there's a correspondence between the area under the curve and the probability. So here's our standard normal distribution curve. The area under the whole curve is equal to 1. So if we want to know the probability that a value is less than a certain number, we just look at how much of that area is taken up, and that gives us our probability. So the probabilities and the areas are the same. So we're going to look at how to find areas or probabilities. Now the table that is out in ANGEL for you finds probabilities or areas this way. It takes the Z value listed in the table and it gives you the probability or the area from that Z value to the left. So it's a cumulative distribution. This is also the same thing that you get from Excel using the norm s dist function. So here's an example. If we want to find the area under this curve to the left of the value Z equals 1.17, so this would be the same as finding the probability that z is less than 1.17. Draw your own little distribution curve. Draw in the z-score and then shade the area in the direction that you need to. So if we're going to the left of z equals 1.17, then we're going to draw in the value 1.17 on the graph and shade to the left. So that's going to look like this. And we want to see if this picture basically matches the one up here. If it does, then we can either just look up the z value in the table or we can use Excel and just put in that z value and we'll get our probability or our area directly. So we can look up 1.17 in our table or we can use in Excel we can type in equals norm s dist 1.17. Here's a little bit of what that table looks like and the way we use this if we want 1.17 we look in the column to the left and look at the 1.1 and then for our second digit to the left of the to the right of the decimal place we use the headers along the top so we look at the 0 0.07 here so we go where those two meet that's going to be 0 0.8790 if we're using Excel then we would type in our function be sure and put the S in there that gives us the standard normal distribution and we just type in 1.17 and that will give us the same value as what we got from the table. Okay, another example. This time we're finding the area to the right of z equals 1.17, or in other words, the probability that z is greater than 1.17. Now here's the picture that we need to match to use that table or that function in Excel directly. And if we draw in our 1.17 and our shading, we see our shading is going to the right, so it doesn't match this picture. What we can use is the complement. Since we know the whole area under this curve is equal to 1, then if we found the value from 1.17 to the left, then the area to the right would have to be 1 minus that. So we can just take 1 minus the probability that z is less than 1.17, and that will give us our answer. And we get 0.1210. Another example, this time we're finding 
the area between two z values. So between z equals 0.13 and z equals 1.35. So we just put the z between the 0.13 and the 1.35. If we draw our picture of this, we're going to draw in the 0.13 and the 1.35 and shade in between those two, like this. And that definitely doesn't match our picture up here. To do this, if we're trying to find the probability between two values, we just find the probabilities for each one from our table or from Excel and subtract the two. So the probability, oops, I have a typo here. The probability that z is less than 0.13 is 0.5517. The probability that z is less than 1.35 is 0.9915. Those you could find both from the table or from Excel. And to get our answer, we just subtract the two. So the probability that z is in between these two is 0.4398. Now sometimes we have the probability and we want to go backwards and find the z score. So to do that, we have to look up the probability or the area in the middle of our table. Or if we're using Excel, we use a slightly different function, which is norm s inv. So here's an example. If we're trying to find the 95th percentile, then that means that 95% of the values are less than our specific z value. We're trying to find what that z value is in this case. So we know the area to the left of our z score is 0.95. We're going to look up 0.95 in the middle of the table. And notice that since our z score is going to be to the right of 0, we know it's going to be positive. So we're going to find the value the closest that we can get 2.9500 in the body of the table. If we're using Excel, then you would type in equals norm s inv 0.95. And the value we get from either one is going to be 1.645. In this case, it just so happens that 0.9500 is exactly halfway between two values that you see in the table. So we're going to take exactly halfway between those two. Here's another example. If we're trying to find what separates the bottom 2.5% and the, and the top 2.5%. So in other words, we want this left tail and this right tail, and we want to know what those z-scores are that separate those two. So the one over here is going to be negative. The one over here is going to be positive. And since our, our standard normal distribution curve is symmetric, if we can find the negative z-score over here, then we'll have the positive one just by taking off the negative sign. So they're going to have the same value, just one will be negative and the other will be positive. So the easiest thing to do is to find the negative one since it already involves an area that's to the left, so it matches our picture. So we're going to look up 0 0.0250 in the body of our table, or in Excel we can type in our inverse function and the 0 0.025. With either one of those, we're going to get a z-value of negative 1.96. That means that our positive z-value over here is just positive 1.96.